Mongeau to the moment. To honorable high office holders, past and present, the distinguished participants from around the world, and of course to our hosts, the Universal Peace Federation, thank you for inviting me to join you once again. For the past two years, I've been a guest at the World Peace Summit in Seoul, South Korea. What an experience it has been. Perhaps nowhere else in the world is there such a gathering of experienced leaders from government, business, academia, and faith communities representing the wide array of global nations and making such a broad contribution to global thought on the challenges facing humanity. As all who have attended can attest, it's an experience without parallel. My congratulations go to the Universal Peace Federation, to your chairman, Dr. Thomas Walsh, to your international president, Dr. Michael Jenkins, and to your Canadian president, my friend, Dr. Franco Fumalero. But especially to Dr. Hak Jahan Moon. It's due to Dr. Moon's vision and inspiration that a global dialogue of this scale and of this quality is occurring at a time such as this. And what an extraordinary time this is. The pandemic of 2020 is an experience that no one alive today will ever forget. It's an experience that for better or worse will leave a lasting and indelible mark upon humanity. Many have compared it to the global financial crisis of 2008-2009. I was Prime Minister of Canada at that time, and there are aspects of this crisis that remind me of those times. But there are some very big differences. For one, this is a significantly more difficult crisis. It's both an economic crisis and a health crisis. And the solutions for the one run counter to the solutions for the other. This is why, contrary to much commentary, we can have no idea which countries, quote, have it right or are, quote, getting it wrong. This is without precedent. And we do not yet know the full outcomes on either front. Another big difference from the global financial crisis is in the realm of international cooperation. In November 2008, shortly after the global financial crisis began, I was part of a meeting at the White House convened by George W. Bush, a meeting of the world's biggest economies and its leading international financial institutions. It was, in effect, the first ever meeting of the G20. In a couple of days' work, we drafted the basis of an international plan to deal with the crisis. Much work remained to be done at the national level, but the outlines of a global response took shape. It involved significant international cooperation and avoided many potentially systemically damaging actions. This time, there has been nothing resembling such international collaboration. And so we've seen a myriad of conflicting economic closures and travel restrictions, the completely unnecessary global oil war, fights over supplies of personal protective equipment, and now the competitive race for privacy and superiority in the development of a vaccine. I wish I could tell you that what we have witnessed is an aberration, but I think the reality is that the reasons for this lack of international cooperation run deep. International institutions cannot function effectively without the cooperation and leadership of the world's strongest powers. Today, there is not such leadership. The United States is not willing to provide it. This is not just about the current US administration. The American public is exasperated with its global leadership role, which has far too often left the United States with wildly disproportionate burdens and obligations for which the American public sees little commensurate benefit. China cannot fill a void for a different reason. It is not widely trusted. And when we look at its role in the early spread of the virus, how could it be? And for its part, the European Union remains focused on the internal divisions that have become much more challenging in the decades since the global financial crisis. So the lack of international cooperation today is very explicable, but that does not mean that this state of affairs is not risky. On the contrary, we're entering this phase of non-collaboration in the world at just the moment